Hello, my name is Claudia Salas, and in this video, I will talk about a course that I took that is called uh, Circular Economy, and it's about sustainable materials management. And for this, um, I will show you my screen so you can see the content of the, of the course. This is a course um, was uh, given by uh, Lund University and many others. And it's a course for from Europe. And um, well, at first I wanted to to explain what I was interested in this course. And well, I'm I'm studying industrial engineering and focus more on uh, resources efficiency and how we can use less and do more with with the resources. So. Um, I knew I knew a little bit about circular economy, and I was very interested in how we can do the transition into a more sustainable way of of managing these these resources. So that's why I'm I was interested in in this in this uh, course. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get a, a certificate, but here shows that I have all. Um, well, that well that I completed all the 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 weeks and of course the, that the course is completed. Oh, well, let let me start um, by going to week one, and this is a very extensive course. It was very interesting, yes, but they gave a lot of, a lot of information. So I will only talk about um, the topics that I was very interested too. So yeah, um, as you can see in week one, um, we were given an introduction to the course and they started explaining uh, what is circular economy. That is basically a new production and, and consumption model in which um, we ensure that we have sustainable growth over time. And this is focused on markets that um, give incentives to reuse and products, um, not as the linear consumption we are used to, in which we buy something and when it stop, stops working, we scrap them, throw, it, throw them away, and then is, is start um, extracting new resources. So this is um, nothing like that. Here we are very focused on reusing reusing the, the, products, the products we already use. So um, in this course, um, yeah, we focus on that, but then um, it starts explaining about uh, where, we, where the, the resources we use come from, and how do we extract them? And this is very related to what is meaning. And you know, meaning is a very ancient activity. Um, that we've been performing for a very, very long time. And it's a very important activity because this has contributed um, to what, um, to, to developing new technologies and new um, uh, tools that indirectly um, help us to evolve, you know, indirectly, meaning also contributes to the development of the human race because it changes our quality of life. And well, um, it starts explaining that, um, yeah, we've been, doing it, we've been doing this from a very long time, but from a while ago, we started abusing of substra subtracting certain resources. And this is very bad because of course, um, mineral deposits are not finite. I mean, I'm sorry, mineral deposits are finite. So um, at some point we will run out of resources and we start, uh, we need to change um, into a more sustainable way of mining. And um, there's a good thing about this is that um, there are a lot of materials that has have certain properties that makes them very suitable for circularity, and we can um, we can recycle them. But 
it's uh, quite hard because right now we don't have uh, we have a lower average rate of recycling no and um one one example of this is, is aluminum that is a uh, a very uh, used uh, material i mean we see it everywhere we see it in the kitchen we see it in the cars in the cell phones and everything so it's a very used uh, material and it also have a very um develop a recycling system that can help us to recycle it. But even if we recycle all the aluminum we're using now, we still need to produce more. So this is something that should put us um, to think that the consumption we're having, it's not sustainable and it will lead us to, to extinction and, and to the until we don't have enough resources to maintain the the society and, and the population so we start to think into a more sustainable way of meaning and meaning it's a very expensive um, activity because you i mean you know you cannot go into a certain land and say oh, okay i'll start meaning here no you need preparation you need um um, analysis and studies, and and that's why it's so expensive, and, and, that, and something that they they do in order to reduce the um, footprint of meaning is by um, taking into account the environmental protection methods. Yeah, um, this uh, lecture was very interesting because um, it shows us that all materials are classified into how critical they are. And for these, they use two variables. That is how um, supply risk have, how, how much supply risk have, and how, uh, uh, what is its economic importance. So you, by, with those variables, they um, create a, a matrix in which they, they put each one of the, of the, let me show you here. Here they put the supply risk, and here they put the economic importance. So you you can see that in red there is the the materials that are more critical. Um, for example, magnesium um, has a very high economic importance, have a high supply risk. So um, their magnesium should have um, um, specific strategies to see how we manage it in order to, to assure that we will will have magnesium in the future. Um, okay, so now um, one funny thing is that, yeah, we started talking about, about materials, but um, actually here they, they say, okay, we shouldn't uh, worry, uh, well, we shouldn't focus on, on materials, but more on the product design. And for these, here they start giving um, certain strategies that can help us to improve circularity you now. And one, one very important is that you we need to extend the product lifetime. And this is by, for example, um, not using plan obsolescence, in which you know, that we know that after a certain period, um, a certain product will stop working. No? and we should um, in, in haste preparing so we don't need to buy something whenever um, it has a minor a minor um, mistake or a minor um, problem. Uh, well, um, that was for week one and for week two um, the first uh, the thing that what I thought that I was very important is about how about different strategies that are using for sustainability, and the first one is slowing loops. That is basically um, reduce the consumption of the materials and of products. No, um, we stop using more and more. Um, the next one, the, this closing one, is basically um, reuse the products. So um, it's basically recycling 
And finally, um, narrowing the loops um, means that um, we use fewer materials per product. So I think that closing and slowing the loops is quite hard for the companies because, I mean, they, they look uh, for people that buys a lot for, for them. I mean, you, they want people to buy more because that will give them more um, flow of cash. But there are actually certain um, companies that are <laughs> applying this. Um, one of example of this is Patagonia, that they are in Hazen, um recycling and they say, okay, you don't need to buy um, two shirts uh, per month. I mean, you can use one and over and over until it doesn't work at all anymore. And um, many think that this was quite a bad strategy, but that was good for them because now people um, look at them at, as a very ethic company, you know, that actually cares for the environment. Um, no, well, but you, you use the, the pestle analysis to, well, analyze how your company is, um, is situated. And, but there's certain barriers that um, companies see when they try to analyze this. Um, for example, in, in the political part, a lot of the reasons that doesn't depend of them, no? depend on the government, depend on the, on the country they, they live in. And a lot of, of, of times the taxes they have to pay um, to use certain services or to, use, to produce certain products are higher than the others. No? And a company after all, all most of them looks for um, economic um, revenue. So um, that's why they prefer to keep doing it and to keep operating as they were before. And the second, um, the second part is the economic and well, the circular economy um, needs more resources no? because um, for example, if you want to get um, the products or that doesn't work anymore from your customers to repair them, well, you have to um, invest on reverse logistics and that's quite uh, expensive. And that can lead to a return on, on investment uh, into a negative return on investment. So that's why many doesn't want to follow a circular model. And well, the last one is social. And this has to the, is related more to the customers because often we think that a new thing, a new product is better than one that I was was repaired, no? And we see that, for example, when um, I think it's Liverpool, Liverpool offers, of course, brand new phones. They also uh, offer um, phones that are um, repaired and they sell it uh, as a, in, at a lower price, but um, they specificate that they are um, from manufacturing it. So many people prefer to spend that money on a, on a new phone than a, on a repaired one. So that's very, yeah, related to our mindset. So that doesn't also doesn't depend too much on the company, but on the people. And well, that was for the second week. Um, for the for the third week, um, we see a lot about materials. Um, and here, um, what I remember that materials um, science, you know, everything that studies materials have new challenges. And the first one is that we need to continue innovation and deliver with recyclability. Rec recyclability. So, um, it's hard to continue innovative materials that are suitable for um, circularity because you have to take a lot into, uh, into account to actually um, specificate and ensure that the, the, the material is sustainable. And well, here's also about um, 
about materials, but there also we see a lot of about um, eco-design eco strategies. And that is basically that um, it's like producing a product or a service that um, minimizes its environmental impact. Um, and well, efficiency of certain resources that are actually um, um, maximized with, with the eco design because we, as we said before, um, we try to do more with less. So efficiency is, is, um, is in incremented. And there's um, six strategies to do this. Um, I will read them because <laughs> there are quite a lot. A lot. But the first one is that uh, we need to design for attachment and trust. And this was very, very, um, very um, interesting because they have right. I mean, whenever, when we have something that we have a uh, um, emotional connection to, we don't throw it away. I mean, for example, if you have a certain a toy or I don't know, uh, a cell phone, a, a watch, something that has um, sentimental value for you, you don't throw it away. So we need to start designing the products that can have that connection with you. So it will be difficult, more difficult for you to, to throw it away and buy another one. So that's a very good strategy. Um, also, you have to... Um, do uh, products that are designed for durability. So doesn't need to um, buy one and throw it away and scrap and something like that. Um, the third one is designed for standardization and compatibility. Um, so you can use the same thing for different products. For example, um, your charger, um, the, the the entrance, I don't know if it's the entrance, um, works for, for a certain watch, for, works, works for your phone, for your, um, for other devices. No? And you don't need to buy a lot of things, different things to do, um, to do the same task or, or whatever. Um, the fourth strategy is designed for maintenance and repair. So it's the same one, the same thing. Um, if something doesn't work, you can easily repair it and you don't have to throw it away. And um, the fifth is designed for adaptability and upgradability. So um, you will have uh, updated things and you don't uh, find the need to change and, and buy things that are more updated. No? And well, all these sounds fun and well, sounds good. And I think that many products are trying to do that, uh, but it's not that I hate Apple or, or, or that, but I think that Apple is not a very, <laughs> it's not good in any of those, you know? Um, I've never used Apple, but as far as I know, um, you, have the need to, you feel the need to change your phone every year because you don't think that um, it's as new as the, the next one and that has the certain, the same um, aspects that you need to use. But the thing that I, I the thing that I think they lack the most is about um, standardization and compatibility compatibility because I mean you need certain type of, of cable of um, of charger to to use in your phone that is not compatible with others and you need yeah you need very specific things for to use your devices with other devices that are not from Apple so I think they they lack a lot of in that aspect but also, yeah, it's not related to eco design. Well, into the development of the product, but more in the develop in the design of um, 
the packaging. I mean, I've seen how they package their things and they use a lot of, of plastic and, 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 um, and carton, carton <laughs> to, um, to involve uh, uh, just a simple mouse or, or a cable. I mean, they use a lot of, of paper, plastic, for a simple thing. So I think they, they are very, um, they should reconsider um, the, the, their designs in order to, well, if they want to follow our sustainable um, and circular model. And well, that was for the third week. In the fourth week, um, we see more about um, policies and, and laws that are being implemented in, in, the, in the world in order to follow a circular and sustainable way of, of materials management. And well, this is quite um, very long, wasn't very interesting for me. Um, maybe I just could uh, point a few things that, um, that they say that we need to be more efficient with the products that are more critical. And that's very, very um, valid because we need to, um, to, well, to use them um, very correctly. And so we don't uh, spend more than we need to. Um, and for that, they, um, they created and designed different product programs like um, the National Resource, Resources Strategy of Finland and the Critical Materials Strategy in the US. No? The, and also in Europe, they perform other, um, other activities and, and other programs um, in order to yeah, uh, enhance the efficiency of, of the products. For example, um, in two, um, well, in Europe, um, the European Commission launched the Resource Efficient Europe Flagship Initiative in 2012. And what well, was actually like a roadmap um, to follow so we can, we, we can have a more efficient uh, use of materials. I think that was the most important thing about the, the course, as I said, was very, very extensive, but uh, really, helpful to start understanding what is circularity and how it can help us into um, day by day. And actually, if we, how we can also start doing um, our part into help um, the, the implementation of this type of models, because yeah, companies are doing those, but they look for customers that are um, interested in those type of, of products. So I think it's very helpful if we all change our man mindset and start um, looking for a sustainable way of living. And well, that's it. I hope you like this video.